Thank you. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> and I'm not the technical well, person. <laughs> you know, sometimes we overlook things. <clears throat> sometimes we don't pay attention. But eventually we listen. And thanks to Debbie got fixed. Because we were... It would have been like this. Good morning. You have to turn your phone. Or your head. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome to... Um, We'll talk with everyone. We appreciate you being here this this glorious, glorious, glorious morning. It's a little cloudy out today, I think. Yes. I didn't check to see what the rain thing is. Like. Uh, looks like, uh, let's see, the Devon Will radar looks like rain outside. <laughs> it looks like it's going to rain. The weather forecast for this morning. <laughs> I'm going to have some water while she does. <laughs> We have thunderstorms. Imagine if they sold vodka like this. How bad that would be. <laughs> you can make it like that. I've seen people do that. So walk around. Put you some water in walk your, around like put some vodka in like, your water bottle. Walk around like Summer Newman drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty water. T. Briggs, you are up early, my man. It is like 5 o'clock in the morning where you are. What the heck? Thanks for t thanks for popping in though. We appreciate you, man. You okay? T, tell me. Earthquake. You're okay? Cuz I know there's still tremors. You heard from Shirley cuz I haven't called her. You guys okay? You need anything? Not that I can bring anything. Not that I'm coming back to California cuz the dang on ground shake for no apparent reason. Um, but I but I, but I hope you and yours are okay. Yeah, the volume is on the side don't help you too. Um Good. Thank you. Um, Tony lives out in in, 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 in Los Angeles, and um, we sort of met, you know, through Urban Game Changers and, and stuff, and then I got a chance to meet him at Politicon while he was working. <laughs> well, I was working too, but not nearly as hard as he was. Uh, so I trust that things are okay. Let me know. Uh, this morning, we are going to talk about something that happens in, 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 in marriages uh, as they as they progress, you stay married to the same person. Hey, Bob, wacko Bob, what's going on, buddy? Um, that, that cool. I'm glad, Tony. Um, something that goes on in in, in marriages. <laughs> Bob knows I love the hearts. <laughs> oh, that's Had enough hearts there. Too. That's. That's from our days when we um, we were on the same network on, on Blog Talk Radio and Mixler. Uh, he's since gone on to um, Spreaker. Welcome to the light. Um, in any case, um, we're going to we're talk about something that happens in marriages. You stay married to the same person long enough, these issues, things, could they pop up. Become a, a, an issue. I mean, they pop up. And in our previous uh, show, um, which was two weeks ago, we apologize for last week. But um, hubby here. I had work. He's got a few things going on. So I had work. I got a I got a new job at a theme park. Trying to make at the Bush Garden. Trying to stay indoors. <laughs> <laughs> <Make your way. laughs> Wacko Bob, you're the best. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, but anyway. um, we talked about uh, in sickness and in health, and um, we are dealing with something, and and that that came up because at that time. Um, I have, I got diagnosed with an illness and for right now it's kind of like a chronic illness. Um, it's something that's not going to go away unless I have surgery. Yay. We hate surgery. And I, in, in the last theater. three years I've had two surgeries and I'm, I'm not feeling it, but you got to do what you got to do. And, um, and we wanted, and my, my husband wanted to address how he deals with, uh, me having a chronic illness at this time. And it can, it can be a, a toll on a marriage and being of a particular age group, uh, <laughs> 27, okay, <laughs> not if I'm, you can be 27 because then that'll make me what 24 that'll be we'll, we'll, we'll re, re, rewind it to the beginning yes 
We'd be newlyweds with no kids. And we wouldn't be talking about this issue. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was going in late to work this morning, we know what we would be doing. <laughs> yeah, we would just be, you know, lost track of time. Um, so when, so when your spouse, especially, and guys, this is really important that you guys listen up because, um, because there are all sorts of physical reasons, um, for things that used to be, and we were talking about this yesterday when we were talking about this, Mm -hmm. used to be part of the, you know, the change. I remember the episode of, of All in the Family, All in the family. Where, where Archie was just frustrated with Edith. Just frustrated. And he's like, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Just change. Change. Do it now. If right you got to do this change, change do it now. now. It's hysterical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, that's the, you know, that's the, you know, that's, you know, that's sort of the frustration that a lot of men, a lot of husbands will go through because there's not a really deep understanding and I think that that helps a lot, understanding what's going on, because because mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, and a lot, you know, and, and during that time, especially in a time of 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 all in the family, in the seventies, people thought it was just kind of something that people went through. No one really understood why it was going on or how. They just thought they were just gonna just deal with it, and and eventually it would stop. <laughs> eventually it would stop. Um, but I think in the meantime, a lot of horrible illnesses and and, and relational and, and, and relationship stuff happened. And you know, when in the meantime, uh, it's simply because people didn't people weren't aware of what was actually happening. Um, a lot of times, women weren't actually aware of what was happening with their own bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, men were just and you know, men are fixers. We just want to do what we can to make it better. And then there was. Sometimes there's absolutely nothing you can do. That's the most frustrating part. Mm-hmm. There's nothing, nothing you can do. Nothing, nothing you can and, say. And, and as always, with medications and stuff, come more side effects and more symptoms and different things. And they tell you to take hormones, and then the Which hormones why, make you go crazy. And in, the 80s, in the 80s and the 90s, they started putting women on hormone therapy mm-hmm. um, to sort of quell all this down. But again... You start messing with your endocrine system. See, see how much I've learned? I've learned the word because I went to college. Um, and then that causes other problems. Yes. And then you're chasing around these other problems. And this and, and the root cause is still happening. You know what? And the root symptoms that are the are big symptoms there. are still happening. Um, mood swings, uh, hormone-induced depression, and I think that's what it is more than anything most of the time. Uh, upset because people can't control what they're thinking. People can't control how they're feeling, uh, and there's forgetfulness and brain fog, and all and, that, stuff. and all the frustration and, that's you know that's associated with it, with those conditions. So it is, it can be a lot. Weight gain, weight gain for you know for some, um, it can be a lot. It can be a lot, and um, along with the everyday stresses of just. Living in the living world, life. <laughs> living in the world, paying bills, going to work. You know, dealing with dealing with cars, dealing with kids, dealing with stuff, um, dealing with you know, people at work, um, and so that's added on. And I think that when, when we talk about it, you know, sometimes I think there are people who have lost their marriages during this time because we when we started this, we we all, we, all, we wondered how do people be married twenty five years and then suddenly go, I'm out. Mm-hmm. And, and some of it could have to do with what we're talking about the this change of life the is change. what they, they call it. And uh, I was uh, in the last month, I think, diagnosed with what they call periothyroid disease. Hey, Bob. Hi, Bob. My guys. <laughs> Good morning, my guys. What up, what up fellas? And and <laughs> and um, periothyroid disease is um, when you get these little tumors that appear on your thyroid glands, the, the four of the glands that are back there, and you start getting these tumors on there. And the way in, and the only way that they can think that it's possibly happening is for your, um, what is the, calcium 
Hey, check your calcium, and if your calcium is raised, and that, and that sends off calcium level, and that sends off a couple of red flags because people who have cancer, um, they watch their calcium levels as well, uh, and and they get too, too too high. You check for that. So you, so there's always that anxiety, and um, and anxiety is one of the also one of the side effects too. Yes. Um, let's see. You know, my guys are on, and and, and my guys need demonstrations. They need. They, Oh, look, I found something for you. This is your thyroid. This is cool because it's got four things. Mm -hmm. And your thyroid has four jets. <laughs> we'll call it for anything else. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and no one knows really why, some of them will get clogged. Sometimes it's genetic or whatever. They just get clogged. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes overactive. And it just starts spurting out whatever. Whatever hormone. And that, and that causes a, a, a misbalance of, of hormones in your body. Now, this is as much from my guys here on, 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 on Facebook this morning as our people watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because this is, this is, parathyroid disease is such a, an, it, 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 it's a new field, but it's so widespread. And it used to, and we were talking about this last night, it, all these things used to be chalked up to the change. Yeah, like you're you're just going through the change of life. You, 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 you just need to take some hormones. Well, they're finding out that, you know, that it's not just the change of life. It's not just you going through, you know, the hormone. Because I had a hysterectomy, they said I'd go through early menopause. Menopause. Why so menopause. I don't know. Should like you, menstruation. Should, should you just pause for men for a while? Is that what it means? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be pausing for but, men for a while. But that I uh, now that I've have done a, a lot of research and speaking to you know specialists about it, it it. It's really probably a lot of women haven't been diagnosed that it's their thyroid actually that's the problem and not just going through the change of life. Uh, because the symptoms and all of the things that, that go along with that are the same. And um, several women that have had this surgery, it's like they have a new lease on life. They you have all this energy and you have um all this <laughs> you have Thanks, all this Bob. energy <laughs> and and different and 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 the severe depression and and anxiety cuz you know a lot of women about my age are talking about they you know you have anxiety and and different things happening that you and some of them are in menopause, <laughs> so it 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 opened my eyes to a, a lot of things because a lot of people were telling me, "Well, you're just going through the change, you know, because you had that surgery. You got you. That's what it is." But um, thank God I have a doctor that was persistent because they have been saying this for what even before I had the history. Oh yeah, well before. Um, to to go to the specialist so that I can have these I got scanned you get scans done and all of this the blood work it shows the the calcium. calcium but then you have the scans and it can show you that you have these little noids on on your thyroid noids noids sound cute they're not um, so the idea is that this is and we weren't supposed to do this together you're supposed to do this by yourself mm -hmm. but she that's okay. Um, so the idea is that 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 there may be real there may be real reasons, and I think that's important, um, guys. You understand there may be real physical reasons why your wife is acting and feeling a certain way, um, and it and and, and it, it may or may not be anything that is something that you've done or can do, but you should you should at least look at the, the this possible cause. I mean this. A lot of people are being diagnosed with this, and, and we're, we're finding out that a lot of people are actually getting relief from these symptoms um, by having the, the, the parathyroid surgery. Uh, we happen to be blessed that not far from here, right up the road there, there is a Norman Parathyroid um, Center, which is one of the biggest parathyroid centers in the country, in, in the hemisphere, really. People come from, from Canada uh, to come down and surgery and do a surgery -cation. You know what that is? You come and you vacation, you get your surgery, you hang on the beach, you chill, and then you get a tan and go back to Canada. Uh, 
people do that. People, there's an, there's a whole industry here in this area, and in Miami with my friend Bob uh, Bob Guciero, who's on, who's throwing all sorts of random stuff here on, on the Facebook feed, which I am ignoring you, Bob. Um, <laughs> uh, people come down and do all sorts of things like that. So, in any case, now <clears throat> the other side of that gentleman is that while your wife is going through this, is you have to under, it, we all have to understand that it's very very tough it can be it can be very very hard it can be very very stressful mm -hmm. and on both of you yes and the level of uh, of stress is again like it gener if if it's shown and and you give into it then it just elevates your wife's level of stress and anxiety so um the thing that you can do the first thing you can do um is you have to be very patient. You have to be very patient. Especially, especially once you figure out what the deal is. And, it's, and, and it's, you know what the once you know is. what the problem is and that you're heading towards a solution, um, you have to be very, you just have to be patient. Um, because, and not give in to the frustration because you will be frustrated. Because it's a frustrating thing. Like I, I, I teach saxophone, flute, and clarinet primarily for a living now. And, um, and I tell my students all the time, this is frustrating. Learning an instrument is frustrating and it's okay to be frustrated. Um, Learning anything, it, it can be frustrating. It can be frustrating. So, that you have no idea what you're doing and- And everything's there. new and it's not working out like you thought or you, and you're not thinking about it right. And I think that that's something else too. You have to think about it right. You have to think about where these things are coming from. I'm going to say something that uh, I think I mentioned back in video three or four. We've done dang near hundred of these. Wow. Um, is that it's hard not to take it personal. And it's hard sometimes for women to remember that their husbands have feelings too. Yes. Ain't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Ain't it? It's hard sometimes to remember that, that. They're not punching bags for us to just. I don't feel all of our I don't feel on. I don't feel good, so I'll kick you in the nuts today. And you just better go give me some coffee and deal with it. <laughs> Limp your ass over to the Keurig and give me some coffee <laughs> and stop all that crying. <laughs> but um, so and, and 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 it's hard because you want to solve the problem, you want to be supportive, you want things to be better, and there's nothing you can do. So you have to be very, very patient. And you can't give in to your frustration. You can't be the Archie Bunker. You can't. You can't. You gotta do this change now. Change right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't. Because, first of all, it won't happen. And it'll just increase frustration. And it frustration. only makes things more difficult for both of you, actually. Because, you know, the, the, for the wife part, you know, yelling and screaming at him and... and Kicking him in the nuts or whatever he please said. Don't, please don't kick me in the nuts. Don't do that. Please don't kick me in the nuts. <laughs> but um, I've just had, I've had surgery. Be, being uh, be being surgery. mean to everybody and everything around you is not going to make you feel better. Because if you're a sensitive person, kind like I am, once you come back to reality and you know you're not in the pain or you're not feeling the big cloud of gloom over you. You feel bad about the way that you did it, and then that sets you back even more. It just—it's a never-ending cycle. Yeah. So. We, so if you feel like today is a day that you can't handle it, or you, it's best to just try to be by yourself. And again, guys, we just got to be patient. You just have to be patient. Because sometimes she don't want to see your face. Don't give in to the frustration. <laughs> just don't, and and it's and it's and, and it's okay. Um, because if you're headed towards headed towards a, a solution, um, the the word is the word on the screen is that um, that that solution is going to bring both of you some relief, and that's what we have to be looking forward to. Um, you know, and in the meantime, um, and Debbie said that, that that she was going to talk about this is that you can pray that you can pray for your spouse. Who is going through this that the conditions are lessened the, the least amount 
possible and um, that you're going to come to a conclusion, uh, a, a, a good conclusion on this sooner than later. Uh, because it's hard to be mad at, you know what, and I, was it Pastor John that said this? Um, I, I guess that's what I remember him saying this. That it's hard to be mad at somebody you're praying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said that yesterday. It's hard to be mad at somebody you're praying for. Yes. It really is. Think about, think about this, and this is an offshoot real quick. If you think about somebody at work that gets on your nerves. If you start praying for them, it's hard to be mad at them. It's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you might not. Hey, Philip, my boy, my guy, my guys are here this morning. Yes. <laughs> um, welcome back from Montreal. Uh, but um, it's hard to be mad at somebody you're praying for. It's really hard to be angry at somebody you're praying for. Um, and 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 in this case, when your wife is going through this, it's it's easier for you to release that frustration if you're praying for. Her. It's easier for you to release them. You're going to be frustrated. That's all there is to it. Um, but it's easier to not give in to that frustration if you're praying for it. So that's what I suggest you do. You've got to pray and you have to be patient. you got to do what guys do. We hang in. We hang in on all sorts of stuff that's not important. And, and another thing that I think is important is that both of us as a spouse need to uh, remember to take care of yourself. Um, and I heard, and I know we're not big fans of Monique, but she does say some good things sometimes that I, I admired her for because she, she used to be very <laughs> overweight. And she was saying that, you you know, sometimes because you uh, don't exercise and you don't eat right, that you, um, you, you think that you're getting what you want, but then you become a burden to your spouse, to your family. So, you know, it's important that we take care of ourselves so that we are not a burden to our spouse or to, to uh, our family. Do what you can. Yeah, okay, so no And yeah, it, it's hard. And I, the pastor was saying that yesterday about, you know, when you're going through things and doing things, it's very difficult to want to um, exercise and eat right and do things that you know that are going to be better for you. And that really hit me yesterday. I was thinking about that because, you know, a Feeling sorry for yourself is one of the symptoms in this thing that I'm having depression and stuff like that and feeling sorry for me. So you eat more and you don't want to get up and go exercise. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. But just push yourself because that that makes make you feel better. And then you're not going to want to bite your husband's head off. And the idea is that you're not get you you know what it's it, not that what people aren't, aren't going through isn't real because it's very real, but you you're not giving into it. I think that that's really I think that's really the key that we're just not going to give into it just, even because it's real. Um, yeah, and I mean you're just not going to give into it. You're not going to let it overwhelm you. You're not going to let it overcome you. You're just not going to. You're going to battle through anyway. You're going to be patient, you're going to pray, and you're going to be persistent. And that is super important in, 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 in being in, you know, and, and having a, a successful outcome. And the good thing <clears throat> about this is that there is a cure. Like I said, we um, I'm getting ready to prepare for surgery and get, get the noids and all the things taken out that are causing the severe problems that are, are going on so there is hope there, there is. is hope so women out there if you're having any you, any symptoms and because i have a co-worker that you know she's the heart palpitation she was going through and she you, you know your doctor tells you go see a cardiologist and blah 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 and it comes to find out she's perfectly healthy it's nothing wrong with her heart but they need to test her thyroid yeah, get it get it done you know what and and it goes back to the same thing talk to your doctor talk to be in communication with your doctor and ask questions ask could it be might it be mm -hmm. could it be because you're could, not the doctor and can we check but yeah you've but, seen a doctor on tv 
but at, you can ask, but you but you're perfectly perfectly within your rights to ask the questions. Could it be this? Be an advocate for yourself. Yes. Could we? Oh, look who it looks. Hi, man. Some odd people. <laughs> Um, so, so that you know, and I, I think that's really important. That go ahead and be an advocate for yourself. Yes. Ask the questions. Now, please don't say, "Well, I was on on <laughs> on on what is it? The um, the internet md md dot com." Yeah. They hate they they hate that. <laughs> they have Doctor, when you mention that site, doctors are like, oh, "Don't do that." I should have just gone on the internet. Why did I go to medical school? I could have just gone <laughs> on the internet. I could have just learned this on YouTube. Um, but it's okay to, to, to learn a little enough to, to, enough to ask a question because in a lot of times, you know what we, what's going on, just not just in your body or, or health wise, you don't even know enough to ask a question, but learn enough about yourself, about what's going on to ask a question and don't be afraid to ask the question. Could it be this? I've been feeling crappy. I've been gaining weight. I've been, I've, I, I, I've been blue. Um, could it be this? What's not the being able to sleep well, you know, it, it's so many things that are tied to your thyroid. And women, you can't do, believe it. women stop buying the nonsense. It's just because you need to lose some weight. Mm -hmm. That's some of the biggest lies and the laziest doctoring that I that that, that has that has taken place in the last twenty years. That everything it's is because you need to lose weight. And if you lose weight, you'll feel better. When I had this, skinny people in there too. Perfectly healthy skin, and I did research afterwards, perfectly healthy, running marathon skinny people. Same exact condition, and sometimes worse. A lot of times it's genetics. Sometimes the health issues have nothing to do with your weight. Not everything has to do with your weight. Yes, it is a big issue. It can be an issue, but not every do not, not do not take everything. Every time you you ask a question, and and the doctor says, "Well, if you lose a few pounds, you'll feel better." That's not what you're asking. Well, of course, if I lose a few pounds, I'll feel better. Duh, I got that from the doctor on 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 on, on Young and the Restless. That was easy. Um, but this feeling here, could it be this? And I'm not saying for you to get into a confrontation with your doctor because that's the person who is charged with helping you, but advocate for yourself. Ask the hard questions. And if you're not getting the answers, if you're not getting the answers you're satisfied with, change doctors. Yeah. You did that. And I got kicked out. <laughs> I got kicked out for non-compliance. <laughs> but it was the best thing. You know, that's that that's that's really the that's really the, the deal. Advocate for yourself. Ask questions. And husbands, be there for the answers. <laughs> Hush. But uh, be there for the answers. Learn about what's going on with your spouse. Learn about what's going on with your wife. You know, that's how I was able to do the little show and tell. Because the doctor did the show and tell. But he had a real plastic thyroid thing. Um, you know, the same stuff you used to do in high school. The body parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... Uh, and I, but it it helps so much for you to understand. It helps so much for you to understand. All right, so it's uh, we started a little late, but actually that's becoming the time we start now. <laughs> and I had a little problem with my computer, with my phone. In any case, we got to get out of here. Uh, make room for somebody else. Listen again. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been watching here on Facebook, we appreciate it greatly. But if you would. You subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, which is, uh, if you look for a Real Talk with Deb and Will, or if you just search for Deborah Lawson, uh, you'll find it. Subscribe. We're at 67 now, something like that? Yes. Oh, 67, okay. And I am going to do a blog post, um, just a, a journal type thing about the condition and what's going on. Really? Yes, really. Cool. Cool. With I, more details I have for to, you ladies. I have to for watch, you ladies. I have to watch that. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks. You know what? You know what? And I think that you, because, again, that's really important. So, again, we got to get out of here because we have stuff to do. I got things. Jobs to do. Yeah, I got places to go, people to see. So, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you, you when we see you. Peace. Peace.